Capcom's expansion to Monster Hunter World is here, and in this Monster Hunter World Iceborne review, we'll take a good look at the content and what it adds to the base game, and suggest whether it's worth your time and money from the perspective of a longtime player who is not necessarily hardcore. Iceborne is an expansion focused on endgame and master rank difficulty, meaning it's somewhat scaling up the ante from the DLC monsters and the addition of tempered and arc tempered elder dragons. The story of Monster Hunter World Iceborne follows the style of the base game, with the Research Commission finding an anomaly in the ecosystem in the form of a large migration of Legiana toward the horizon. A strange monster can be seen attacking them, and this excites your partner, the Handler. The Commission decides to follow the migration to a new zone, promptly named Horfrost Reach or the Hinterlands, and establish a new base of operations for research. Of course, not everything is as simple as it seems, and the Elder Dragons appear to make a mess of things here and there, leaving you to stage a defense of the ecosystem of the new world. Monster Hunter games have never been about the story, and it's a welcome change that some effort has been put into creating a narrative that ties together more of the tidbits of lore of the game and gives players a compelling reason to push forward and take on even harder foes. This is by far, however, the weakest point of the game, as the formula is rather predictable and the player character seems weirdly placed in many situations where the only role is to play the savior to everyone and anyone who is nearby. That said, Iceborne does a good job of setting up some epic cutscenes both within monsters and players, and was successful in making me care to discover more about the species I was fighting and their role in the overall ecosystem. Iceborne is all about the gameplay and it does not let you down. The game is an addictive delivery of character optimization, tinkering, research, gathering, and then chaining unbelievable combos. The controls are not as tight as Capcom's DMC5, but they are the best for Monster Hunter yet and the changes from the Clutch Claw make for new and interesting gameplay. There are also new non-combat things to do, such as hunting for gold crowns for endemic life and befriending new Grimmelkind tribes, which is always a nice side activity to cool down after taking on particularly tough enemies. Since the review version of the game was quarantined, installing Iceborne locked me out of online play with those not participating in the review period. I saw very few hunters going around, most of them HR 30 to 50, so I was encouraged that the difficulty spike could not be so much. Boy was I wrong. As I said earlier, I'm not a hardcore player. I don't farm every max boost armor and then 3 minute kill tempered behemoth while my three friends watch and do emotes. But I have done every quest in the game and unlocked every armor, had a healthy combination of upgraded rank 8 armors recommended by the pros, high level decorations, and a collection of Taroth weapons plus Divine Slasher, Reaver Calamity. Not the best, but certainly high level equipment. And it felt like I was hitting with a wet noodle and wearing paper armor. I ended up making a combination of bone and alloy master rank armor, crying inside as I discarded my painstakingly farmed gear in favor of starting equipment for master rank. I soon discovered that I had not been good enough at leveling up my Palico's gadgets and was happy to find that they can be improved further than before, making my feline companion an invaluable asset in combat. Flashy Cage replaced my ever-used Coral Orchestra. I also paid more attention to summoning Grimmelkind tribes to raise my Tail Rider Unity, which was a lot of fun and yielded unexpected results in the form of a new trade mechanism and treasure hunts left behind that lead you to great riches. I had to get done to make the review in time, but the game just pulls you to explore, research, and dwell deeper into each little seeker that hides in completely unexpected places. This compulsion to keep going, learn more, and get better is the main draw of Monster Hunter and Monster Hunter World Iceborne delivers for every player, giving challenging content, but making an entry point for even those who are not fully prepared to take on Master Rank. The Clutch Claw is a powerful new tool that I found extremely useful to fill up my Sword Spirit Gauge. Of course it took time to learn, as you soon discover that enraged monsters will hurt you when you attempt to use it, and you get no frames while on the monster, so if it charges you'll take the damage and be knocked off. Learning this was quite a few carts, particularly for the Baryoth you encountered early on, but mastering this tool is essential to success as you can knock down monsters and deal 1000 plus damage doing so. Additionally, there are some monsters that make Slinger use a very tactical choice in combat. Make sure you read monster tips when you fight some of the tougher ones. The new weapon actions for the longsword change the way I chain my combos and I really like it. I have not had time to try all other weapons, but overall it feels like a welcome addition to the hunter repertoire. I have seen complaints that the monster roster are just reskins, and while the criticism is valid in terms of the monster's skeleton, all subspecies have unique moves and abilities that really up the ante and challenge the way you have learned to fight them. For example, you might think you know how to fight a Legiana, but the Shrieking Legiana will behave differently and perform unexpected moves and actions that will make it a lot harder to defeat. The Viper Toby Kodachi actually made me slot max tier poison resistance for the first time in my 300 plus hours of gameplay, and the Ebony Odegron made me reconsider my rolling stamina pool and sheathing speed. That said, the newly added monsters are, without question, amazing. I love the cutscenes for them, I loved fighting them. Fan-hated Pissing Wyverns aside, I enjoyed all other fights and their mechanics, 
particularly an Elder Dragon later on that not only looks outstanding, but has a unique moveset that will challenge your understanding of the battleground. Bright Moss is your friend. After completing a first pass of the expansion, I organized some multiplayer with a much less geared HR16 player and got him set with the starting gear by simply farming expeditions, which is a great choice by Capcom as new players might have trouble finding parties for the old endgame content, and giving a master rank stepping stone is the right thing to do. From here, we set on to take out the expansion. The annoying watch a cutscene then invite is back and as hated as ever, but that aside, the new gathering hub is a delight, and the loading speed to get into quests worked wonderfully on a PS4 Pro. Capcom claims that two-player co-op has now been rebalanced, and I feel inclined to say it's true as we could complete the expansion without extreme trouble, in spite of having a rather inexperienced player in the party. Please note that this is Fex's review of the game, and the inexperienced player that she's referring to is none other than myself. The last boss of the story mode was a real challenge and took us quite a few attempts, but from there we unlocked the endgame and frankly, we cannot stop playing. The endgame idea is amazing and I cannot say enough nice things about it. It's just so easy to get going and stay there. We'll be covering this more in depth in a separate video and you should not race to get to endgame, but once you get there you'll understand why this was a brilliant idea, much like Cole of Taroth. Monster Hunter World is the best Monster Hunter has ever looked and Iceborne continues the trend. You can see details in monsters and environments and enjoy watching them in their natural habitat and the interactions they have with small monsters and other large monsters. Horfrost Reach is particularly beautiful and I absolutely love the snow effect and the fact that you leave a trail as you travel and monster fights trample the snow accordingly. The new armor and weapon concepts are really good and I very much enjoy discovering the new armors. I'm not at a point where many layered armors have unlocked, so I'm unfortunately not going to be fashion hunting for now, but I expect this will be supported with free events and DLC as the base game was. If you want to see what the new armors have in stock, there's a full list on the Iceborne Armor page showcasing Master Rank armors. There's more to be added at the official launch of the game. There are new music scores for the new monster battles, some of them particularly intense, but I did not find any of them memorable. All in all, the music score for Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter World Iceborne are of similar, just fine quality. Nothing to complain of, nothing to praise either. Final thoughts, Monster Hunter World Iceborne is more of the same and that is a wonderful thing. 14 million players joined the commission with World and Iceborne will likely see most of them return to try their skill against ferocious new monsters and make new feline friends. If you have played the base game and liked it, you will love Iceborne and Endgame will enthrall you. If you are new to the game in general, you'll find your progression to Master Rank is not impeded by a high rank farm wall and will soon be able to join the Endgame action as well. So everyone asks, is the expansion worth $39.99? It's very simple. Did you like the base game? Then yes. Did you keep playing after finishing, doing all the DLC? Then hell yes. Did you wish your party could just get lost in endless hunts and keep whacking at things until you had to start relying on your palicos to set traps for you because you ran out of mats for them long ago and but didn't want to go back? Well then, the real Monster Hunter starts here. Monster Hunter World Iceborne is a sizable, satisfying addition to the base game, expanding the content and scope while adding welcome quality of life features. Welcoming to both new and veteran players, low and high geared alike, the expansion steps up the challenge but gives the right tools for players to progress and provides countless hours of content in a new and addictive in-game mode. It is absolutely worth the price.